Hello and welcome back to the BizFluencer podcast. We have a big surprise today, guys. We are no longer a single woman operation. We are now a podcast with a co-host. I would like to introduce you guys to my bestie and my co-host and the woman who helps me run my business like no other, <laughs> Kalei Laganero. Hello. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here. This is me too. <laughs> the best day of my life. I mean, I don't want to say that because I'm married and, you know, your wedding, <laughs> life, but this is one of the best days because I get tired of talking to myself. And I think that I enjoy podcasts with a conversation and it's very hard to have a conversation on a camera by yourself. Maybe for mm-hmm. some people it's not, but you know, mm-hmm. there's medication for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I didn't want to do one of those awkward intros where I'm like, tell us a little bit about yourself, but tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you mentioned, I do work for CDM and I do a lot of the video editing and some day-to-day things to help CDM run a little bit easier. Maybe That is the, understa- easier. the understatement of the century. <laughs> well, I try. I try to make Donata's life as easy as possible. And she absolutely so. does to the extent that she can. Thanks. She's an angel sent from <laughs> heaven you. to help me not break down in tears. <laughs> so She's a strong woman. She's good. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so why we decided to have Kalei in particular on the podcast is number one, I mean, she's just an amazing person and we have these conversations all the time in our regular lives. And I think that having them in front of an audience can only benefit the listeners of this podcast, but also between the two of us, we have about 20 years of experience on social media and content production. I don't think you can find that in too many other places. And our story about how we got started and how we met is actually super relevant to not only today's topic, which is how we got started in social media marketing and content creation, but also every topic we're going to be talking about going forward. So what I wanted to ask you, and you know, I can answer for the audience as well, but what was your starting point? What sort of made you decide to get into the blogging and blogging world? Because we started way, way back in like 2011, mm-hmm. like when back the internet when, was new. <laughs> yes. And like blog loving and blogger was a thing. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Video responses were a thing on YouTube. Mm-hmm. The aspect mm-hmm. ratio was not widescreen. It was a whole other world. A so what, whole what experience. <laughs> what made you decide to get started with that? I first started with my blog because I like beauty products. And then I found like there was this whole thing of moms who also liked beauty stuff. So that's yep. kind of how I got into it. And it was like when Michelle Fawn was on the brink of her rise. And yep. so it was pretty early on YouTube. Um, and I've been doing it ever since. I have a similar story. I feel like we all kind of entered the world of vlogging and blogging at that time mm-hmm. because our real life friends were not (laughs) into the same things that we were. I was in law school at the time. So I had just graduated from journalism school. It was my first time living in an apartment on my own. I had a roommate who was really into beauty stuff. I wasn't, I honestly wasn't. And I just got into the online world to sort of learn about it. And I was on YouTube looking up tutorials and I was thinking with my journalism background, I was watching these videos going, I can definitely do that because some uh-huh. of them, listen, <laughs> content production, again, not, not a thing back then. People didn't mm-hmm. have these beautiful, right. you know, phones that took amazing video. They, mm-hmm. the lighting was janky. The mm-hmm. video quality was bad. The audio quality mm-hmm. was bad. You were literally con- stacking your camera up on a shoe box as your tripod <laughs> or both. <laughs> I know. Oh, the, the golden years. <laughs> of YouTube content production. I mean, right now we're sitting here staring into these like amazing 4K cameras and lights. And, you know, we know how to do this like the back of our hands now, but we didn't back then. And, you know, I received training for it in journalism school. The content was unorganized and I would like be looking at these videos going, get to the point. (laughs) I just want to know how to do my winged eyeliner because I didn't know how. (laughs) And so I sort of started documenting me learning about this stuff, the world of fashion and beauty that I hadn't been into before on a blog and experimenting with things and making it fun and not 
so serious. Like it was, oh, you got to do it to be one of the cool kids. It was like, hey guys, I tried this eyeshadow. <laughs> what do you think? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and what I loved so much about you, and I don't want to be the only one talking, but I just want to give you a compliment since it's the beginning of the podcast. What I loved so much about you was you also had a similar sort of perspective on it. Like there were people in that space at the time pretending like it was a cool kids club. And you were just this happy, generous, friendly presence online that was just so approachable. And plus your face was like beats of the gods 24 (laughs) seven and your clothes are amazing and your hair was amazing and your makeup was amazing and your skin was amazing. And I just want to learn everything I could from you. But then you were also this super approachable person that I could ask questions. And we just, I feel like formed this friendship based on where we were at at the time. Right. Right. Because like you said, you were in law school. So you were like on your brink of making sure that your studies were happening, getting ready to study and pass the bar. And then also making sure that you have made time to create your content. And I was just amazed at what you (laughs) did that whole entire time because I could not. (laughs) Well, you were a mom. And to this day, I still don't have children. You now have two who I am obsessed with. I I would die for Kali's children. I am obsessed with her kids. Um, Especially, I mean, your youngest is my best friend. (laughs) I mean, Hoku is my best friend too, but your youngest Mm -hmm. is really my best friend. Zadie is. is, We love each other. (laughs) Yes. But I mean, I see that as sort of a content creation superpower as well. Like being able to batch things and make it work and make it look amazing and professional while you're doing all these other things and being a mom. And, you know, you made dinner for your kids right before this podcast. (laughs) I'm packing packing up my house to move. (laughs) I mean, there's so many things going on. I think in all of our lives, the audience is experiencing this as well. We're like, there's stuff going on Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and content creation is like not the main thing. Right. Right. But it's nice to know that there are people out there who still enjoy the craft of creating the content. I mean, a lot of these influencers that are kind of really big have these teams and we're just us, <laughs> you know? So it's just fun to see and to know that there are, there still are a small group of people out there who like to create the stuff and the, go through the motions of it. It's just, yeah. it's fun to see for me. I think so too, but I also don't want that to be, I don't want any of you out there who are thinking like, well, I don't love creating content. Right. Well, you know, that's what CDM is for. We started Mm -hmm. this, or Mm -hmm. I started this business and brought you on and brought the rest of our Mm -hmm. team on because we do Mm -hmm. love it. Like Mm -hmm. I want to take photography and videography classes, like in my spare time, Mm -hmm. this is something that I love doing. And there are people out there who can help you with that if you don't love it, but because we love it, we've learned Mm -hmm. so much about it. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, that was a long time ago. That was 2011, 2012 when we met. We've been friends ever since. But there was a time period where you and I were not like communicating as frequently as Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we used to. When I first moved to New York, when I started Mm -hmm. my job. (laughs) And, you know, when Hoka was little and Mm -hmm. there was a lot of change happening in your Mm -hmm. life, I assume, you know, I've never really Mm -hmm. asked you about that. So this is like the big Mm -hmm. reveal. Was there a time that you thought about stopping doing what you were doing online? Yeah, actually, um, being a mom, it like consumes you. And so you want to make sure that you're there for those small moments. And as they grow, the early stages of their life are super important. And I wanted to make sure I was there for that. So um, I wasn't as frequent as, you know, in communicating with anybody online. I didn't really have the closest bond, but we also didn't have quick access apps like Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, those things weren't there yet so it wasn't like we could just pop on and talk we had to go on the desktop before they even made an app (laughs) to talk to everybody and it's time consuming but um I was just going through raising her just trying to experience life and I was a new mom so it was kind of foreign to me on how to juggle everything at once Mm -hmm. um so I just I wasn't consistent but Hopefully throughout those years and even until now, I'm a little more consistent with just talking to everybody online, talking to you frequently every day because we work together. So it's awesome. <laughs> right. Well, now it's a little <laughs> bit different. Yeah. But, but yeah, I think you're, I mean, we had Instagram, but it wasn't yeah. the communication app like it is today. Right. It, you know, it's not a place where you can find people right. all the time. You know, right. it was a photo sharing app 
which yep. they've recently come out and said it no longer is. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> it's hilarious to see where it started right. and how it is now and just it's a tighter community on Instagram. You kind of have your own people and your core audience that you get to talk to. And then you get to find other people who are like-minded like you. And um, it just makes it a little bit easier to talk to people on the go. Um, But yeah, during the YouTube times, it was kind of like you comment under the video, you watch the entire video, you comment underneath the entire thing and you have those conversations that way. So yeah, it was, and it, (laughs) and it once, once your friendship sort of got into real life and you got the phone number, like that's when you were like, but that was, Mm -hmm. you know, this was back in the day when like people were still scared of creepy crawlies on the internet. So Mm -hmm. I was like, Ooh, like, I don't actually know her, but I feel like I do. Do we exchange numbers? Do we do email? Like what's the deal? Mm -hmm. And you're right. Mm -hmm. It's not as quick of a thing, but Mm -hmm. I also think in some ways it was a lot easier to grow back then. Had I known then what I know now, I would have a million subscribers. Uh I I probably (laughs) would too. I'd probably be somewhere with my own brand doing something like I mean we have our own brand now but it's a service you know it's an agency which is so much fun I mean but I think our paths would have been totally different if we yeah somehow I don't know what I would do would I be doing makeup lines would I be doing clothing lines what would I be doing I don't know I don't know I kind of like where I'm at right now though I I really like the space that we're at right now Uh because it's almost Uh like this wonderful um, like straddling the line between creativity mm-hmm. and like right. really high level service right. versus like a totally creative brand. I don't think that would satisfy me mm-hmm. like our mm-hmm. agency does. So I'm, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm thankful that we get to work together. We certainly wouldn't be working together probably. No, no, I don't think so. Especially yeah. if we knew like if we were <laughs> killing it the way we are now back then. We probably wouldn't. I know. Like, I would have dropped out of law school, paid my loans right off. <laughs> yeah. With my but makeup we brand. Been, you know, we probably wouldn't have been together like we are now. Like everything put us in this moment to be here I right know. now. So and it's amazing. It's and amazing just, to see. And I want to point that out to the audience as well. Like as we're sharing our stories, there are moments you're mm-hmm. gonna say, aha, I have that moment of recognition. We're like, mm-hmm. yes, do you wish you could go back 10 years and know what you know now and apply it to your life 10 years ago? Maybe, but everything you've experienced in that last 10 years has brought you to this moment. And I wouldn't trade it. I think we're in the perfect Mm -hmm. spot right now. I mean, Mm -hmm. we're building the dream house. I'm trying to convince you and EJ to (laughs) to move to North Carolina with me. Stay tuned on a future podcast episode for when Kalei becomes my neighbor and it's (laughs) wonderful. Um, But I also had that moment where I like didn't know if I could do it anymore because Mm -hmm. like you were saying, there's so many things happening in life, so many responsibilities, especially with the super demanding career or super demanding role as a mom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where you're like, this isn't paying me. Like, right. <laughs> why am I spending right. all this time? Like I could create videos of my children or mm-hmm. I could create mm-hmm. videos just of life in New York and keep them for myself. I don't have to go through all this extra effort to like put it out mm-hmm. into the world and all this like exposing, it's very emotional right. Right. to it expose is. yourself to the, the internet in that way. Mm-hmm. It is. Um, Mm-hmm. So you have to learn to like have tough, tough skin, learn to deal with, you know, the, the flow of things. The and comments. Like that. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not, but it's, I mean, I'm glad I did it because there was that almost breaking point where I was like, do I just try to make partner at this law firm or do I really give this a shot as a business? Because I was doing that thing where I was half in, half out. Right. Oh, I'm a blogger, but like, don't worry. It's not that serious guys. Like, Oh, it's just for fun. Like I was lying to people straight to their face. <laughs> oh, it's just for fun. Oh, don't worry. Like, it's just a hobby where meanwhile, I'm like, please, please mm-hmm. blow up because I do not want to be here anymore. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'm like doing content in my office at the law firm. <laughs> <laughs> because I just so desperately wanted to get out and do the thing that I was passionate about, but I wouldn't tell anybody that. Right. I right. mean, did you ever have that where you were just like downplaying it to people or did you always? Yeah. Know? Until like I would go out to the malls where I am and they would notice me and then I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> so, and like creating content, even for my family. Like I remember when my husband's cousin found me like the day after I created my channel and he was like, is this you? And I'm like, Oh my God. Like it was nerve wracking to have people that I know or people that see me kind of like 
is this you? Like, what are you doing? And then now it's kind of like, everybody wants to do it. So it's like, yeah, now they're asking advice. Yeah. They're asking for advice. Come to CDM. Yeah. Come to CDM. We we definitely train influencers to do this the right way. And, you know, starting out knowing what we know now with the, with our combined Mm -hmm. 20 years of experience, I had this funny that what you just said made me think of the moment my curly hair video went viral. Mm-hmm. And it got 20, I think it's at 21.5 million views on YouTube right mm-hmm. now. I straightened my hair for two weeks because I was walking <laughs> around New York City with a video that had 20 million views on it. And yeah, I was just like, yeah. oh my God, people are going to notice my hair. Mm-hmm. So I straightened my hair for two weeks because <laughs> again, it was this weird line of like right. people noticing in your real life mm-hmm. or like wanting to keep it separate from real life. And now right. it's just so integrated. Right. You know, which I'm happy life. about. I know. Me I, too. I love that it's integrated. I love that it's normal for me to go out with my camera and vlog and do something like that's normal. Yeah. That's not people aren't just staring at you wondering what you're doing. Like it is normal. And I love that because I just I love creating content. I yeah. love making things. So it, it's just awesome to see. And I love that, like even the younger generation, they know how to use it. They know. Yeah. everything about it and it's just like they wow. were born in the dark yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I think now there's actually more recognition of it being a real job right versus I mean you still get a lot of especially business mm-hmm. owners I find mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like brick and mortar business owners not mm-hmm. thinking that influencing is a real job and mm-hmm. we'll have a whole episode on like no influencers do deserve to get paid because it's yeah. a lot of work and in no yeah. other context can you demand a certain result from an advertising platform right without paying mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. we'll have that whole conversation later because <laughs> y'all cheap y'all are cheap mm-hmm. cheap cheap <laughs> um and it's not easy to create content and the high quality deliverables that these companies are asking for it is not easy so no, no. and I mean like I said we'll do a whole different episode on this mm-hmm. that you influencers out there can feel free to just send the companies that want to pay you in product instead of paying mm-hmm. you real money because like mm-hmm. try paying your bills with like a towel like you can't yeah. um, there's now more recognition of it as a real job whereas back then it was almost scary to say that you wanted to do right. it because right you would get all kinds of questions and I didn't even realize that it could be a full-time thing because back when we started it wasn't like okay. you said Michelle Fawn mm-hmm. even was kind of the first one to do it and she mm-hmm. wasn't even full-time she like was mm-hmm. doing other stuff yeah so when did you realize you could turn it into a full-time thing like what was the moment for you um well, th- back then it was a time where you had like MCNs, so multi-channel networks. Remember that. And um, I remember signing with them for like a year because I looked at the contract and I was like, I'm not signing my life away for five years. So I remember signing for a year and then just noticing like, oh, wow, I can make money from this. Mm-hmm. And then I remember a brand reaching out to me and saying like, Hey, we'll pay you to like do this. And it was like a hundred dollars. And I thought I was living the good life. I thought I was winning with my little hundred dollars. Um, and then like, as I started creating the content and producing videos, high quality videos at that, and like improving my gear and making sure that I had everything that I needed, I realized that I can make a lot of money by doing this as Mm -hmm. someone like going to an influencer's house and taking pictures or making sure that I'm doing video or editing something for them, which is what I do now. So um, I think at that point it was like 2014 for me. Mm -hmm. So it was like pretty long. Um, But that's when I actually started to get brand deals and I actually was able to invest into my equipment and get more. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. This is a business. This is what we're doing here. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. It took me a little longer than that. um, Yeah. I didn't go the like you were doing almost agency work Mm -hmm. way before I was. Mm -hmm. We didn't start. I say we meaning. Mm-hmm. Jeff and I, my husband and I mm-hmm. didn't mm-hmm. start doing agency work until like 2019. Okay. 2019. Okay. Yeah. But we started selling online. I went the online course route. Right. Because you did. what mm-hmm. you guys on in the online world and the podcast world right now are missing is the third musketeer who mm-hmm. is Tracy Timberlake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who sort of yes. <laughs> allowed me to see someone actually monetizing their mm-hmm. online platform very effectively for the very first time. And 
she was the first one of us. I mean, there there were, this was kind of a trio that we had. I was surrounded by these like tall, tan, golden goddesses all the time <laughs> with my short, pale self. <laughs> and, um, she was the first one of us to say like, I have 30,000 subscribers on YouTube. Like it should not be this hard to make money. Right. And she did the research. She went and got her PhD. Mm-hmm. And l- watching her do that, I was like, oh, Okay, mm-hmm. so brand deals are not the only way to do this. They're one way. Mm-hmm. They're one income stream. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. But it's not the only way to do this. And yep. that's when I kind of had this moment of, okay, the third eye has the third mm-hmm. eye of business has been opened and there's other mm-hmm. income streams available. Let's dig into what those are. Mm-hmm. So you were already doing things other than brand deals. But I didn't know that. <laughs> like at the time, I didn't know that. I just thought, oh hey, this is fun. Like I didn't do it for the money. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. having money is like necessary. You need it to live. You need it to thrive and to improve. But I initially, when I started, I didn't think you could make money off of it. So I continued to create that content. But the moment I realized like I can monetize, I can get paid for this stuff. Mm -hmm. I made sure (laughs) I set everything up. And I remember before Tracy launched her very first program, because I went to Miami to uh, meet up with her. And she was like, we were having a conversation before she actually did it. And she was like, this is what you need to do. And this is what I'm doing. And she was like, just watch me. And I literally watched her and I was like. Amazed, right? (laughs) Took me embarrassingly long being exposed to the both of you to figure it out. Mostly because I was distracted with what I thought was the right thing to Uh do, which was stay at the law firm and try to make partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking back on it, I should have just been very bold about what I wanted to begin with and moved in that direction instead of trying to keep one foot in one foot out I was miserable for years I mean you've heard the story Mm -hmm. I was from the third year I worked there until I left I was miserable like it was Mm -hmm. unacceptable how how miserable I made myself and it could have just been because I had this other thing that I wanted to do more it's not that the environment was terrible the people I worked with were great the work was challenging I was good at it but I was unhappy (laughs) ma'am it was not cute um and it just took me an embarrassingly long time and what I admire about you and about Tracy is that you just kind of did it I mean she is very bold and you were like you said you just did it for the love of it and I was just Mm -hmm. I was the one of the three of us that was kind of too afraid to take that step I'm so glad I did finally I'm so glad you did too (laughs) You were meant to take it now. It's fine. <laughs> and, and I think that's another message for the audience, a message for the listening audience is that, you know, the timing is going to be right when it's right, but don't, that one foot in, one foot out space is so painful. Mm-hmm. And if I had just committed one way or the other, I think mm-hmm. I could have even made the law firm, you know, a good thing for me. Mm-hmm. I could have even been happy there if I had just committed one way or the other and I didn't. And that is a lesson that I wish I had learned way earlier. Mm -hmm. But I think it also now makes me more decisive. I'm very decisive now, very quickly. I mean, how many business ideas have we discussed in the last like a lot? (laughs) A lot. We have a lot. (laughs) A lot of different branches are coming to Uh CDM very, very soon. And by very soon, I mean business soon, like two years, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because we just can't execute them all um, to the level of excellence that we want to execute them Mm -hmm. like right now. Because if I could take them out of my head and like manifest them, it would be amazing. But mm-hmm. the level of excellence, I think, is another thing that makes it possible to do what we do right. mm-hmm. for the money that we do it for. Because right. we are not the most, you know, affordable option because we are the best at it. You know, we have, like I said, the combined 20 years of experience. Our filmmakers have decades of experience. I mean, mm-hmm. Our main filmmaker, Zach, has been creating videos since he was literally a child. And he's in his 30s now. So amazing. (laughs) I I mean, the people we work with are incredible. And having having and maintaining and insisting on that level of excellence is what allows us to do what we do and do what we love and do it for Mm -hmm. the money that we do it for. And I think that's Mm going to be a a theme probably Mm -hmm. for many of our podcast episodes is like Mm -hmm. insisting on excellence for yourself. Right. Because... You can't, even if you are a mom, even if you are in a nine to five, even if you're in a marriage, even if you're in another situation that requires your time and attention, when you are doing the thing that you want to do, that's the time for excellence in that thing. That's the time to cut Mm -hmm. off all distractions. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you can make family time. That's not saying you have to cut off everything in the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, no, 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 no. But you There's can't let time. it leak in either. Yeah, yeah. You just have to like set these standards for yourself and meet them. Don't meet mm-hmm. anyone else's standard. This is our standard. This is what we are going to rise to. And this is what we're going to maintain and flight at. So yeah, a hundred percent agree with that. And I, I love, I mean, you and your whole family, there are several, several of the Lagunero <laughs> clan that work for CDM. <laughs> I would hire them all if I could <laughs> for any and all tasks. They're just amazing. But you have this amazing family culture of like, no, we're going to get it done and we're going to get it done to our standard and your internal standard matches mine and the rest of the team as well. And it even exceeds it a lot of times. I mean, <laughs> the level to which you do certain things is just incredible. And it's so nice to be able to trust that your team can execute at that level. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have a team if you couldn't, I, I would do it myself. I would set, I would be, the business would be a lot smaller because I would, only expand to that level of excellence. You can't just expand mm-hmm. into bigger, but not better or bigger, but not even right. as good. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. hundred mm-hmm. percent agree. And I, I think also we both think alike in a lot of ways too. So we always like, Hey, come on, let's go girl. Come on, come on. And then you're on the other end, like, nope, that's not it. Let's go ahead and get this done. Let's change this. Let's make it better. And I love that. Like, I don't like to sugarcoat things. Tell it to me straight so we can get it right the next time. Yep. So I, I, think, agree. <laughs> I, think, I think that it's so valuable that you and I have known each other for so long in that way, because it's, we don't have to go through that whole song and dance of sugarcoating things. When I give you notes on something, or when you give me notes on something, it's not being said in a malicious way or in a Mm, that's not good enough sort of way. It's a, Hey, I know your standards and I know our standards as a company. And in order to meet those standards, this is what needs to happen. And I'm never like offended (laughs) about (laughs) things, you know, because it's, I know the spirit in which it's being said. And I think that makes it easier and more effective for everybody, Mm -hmm. including the class, especially the clients. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it makes the, it helps the team run smoothly. Like nobody's scared to voice their opinion or share their own opinion on something if they think that it could make something better, you know? So it's like the type of culture that we want. We don't want anyone to be afraid and we don't want anyone to feel like they're being put down when we do give notes, mm-hmm. but this is our standard. So you got to rise to it. You and got to rise. And we hire based on that as well. Like, right. And we can do a whole, again, a whole episode on hiring, but everyone on the team, I let them know when they come on, like, I'm not hiring you to be a, you know, a cog in the machine. Like you're here because we want to hear your opinions. You're here because you're talented at what you do. And if you have something that can make something better, we want to know about it. And mm-hmm. I think having known you for so long and, you know, many people on the team for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. It's nice to have a little shorthand language that you use. And it's even more intense with your siblings. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> my brother works on the team as well. He's one of our, one of our audio engineers. Um, mm-hmm. One of our content managers is someone I've known since she was a literal toddler. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nice to have that shorthand where you could just be like, boom, boom, boom. It's like the bare minimum of notes and it gets done and you get it back and it's perfect because the person understood you. So having that level of communication and that openness of communication right is so valuable on the team Mm -hmm. and other than fostering it from the very beginning and making sure that everybody feels safe to express their opinions. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to replicate it. (laughs) I don't know how to necessarily (laughs) tell people how to replicate it. And again, we could do a whole other episode on this, but Mm -hmm. it's something that was very important to me from the beginning. And that's why you were one of the very first people on the team, because I knew that that was something I could trust that you would bring to the team. And from there, it just kind of snowballs. There's no, mm-hmm. you know, there's no, I, I think it helps thing. like to have conversations, not just through messages. We have our own inbox messages, but also seeing how we communicate with each other on our certain channels and how mm-hmm. we email. Like, it's really nice to see because it also allows the other people on the team to see, Oh, it's okay for me to, you know, not be so formal or mm-hmm. not have to feel like I need to be proper with, you know, writing something or my approach was taken, you know, totally different. So I think that also helps. And that could be a way that they could 
kind of add that within their company is yeah. just sometimes you need to have that feedback publicly with the team, especially if the team is working on the same thing. That yeah. helps so much. Definitely. And mm-hmm. I kind of want to circle back and kind of bring it back into how we got started mm-hmm. and what that what that means that we can do now. Um, mm-hmm. So with all of that experience, with all that communication that we have and all of you know the extended learning that we've done, how do you bring that to what we do for our clients? Or how do you feel like that contributes to what we've delivered to our clients? Um, I think like on my end, because I am doing a lot of the editing and stuff, you know, making sure that I'm staying up to date on the top editing trends and making sure that I'm watching the most popular video, video whether it's to the industry that I'm in or for the client that I'm working with or not. I need to make sure that I'm ahead of the game. So I'm always researching and I feel like that actually helps our clients because we can bring approaches from other industries into this specific mm-hmm. one and use those same things and apply it and it actually works. So, I mean, we have real estate clients and there are some actual influencer stuff that we can bring in editing wise to make it look good. Or, you know, there's some like real estate groups that we have and there's some blogger stuff that we can bring in that works and that's like our background. So I feel like our entire year experience really does support and help that because we know, like we know how social media works. We know how people use social media and it's just so helpful and you can't really learn that. I mean, you can, but it's easier when it's second nature for people. Yes. It's, it's just so easy. So I agree. And I also feel yeah. like we have the perspective of knowing what things used to be like and where they right. have gone right. in between right. 2011 okay. and now, yeah. because I feel like people just entering, you know, these mm-hmm. youngins out here, they always <laughs> want to call you old. Like the first insult they go to is you're old. Like, mm-hmm. why don't you have a job? You're old. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't get that because like people who get an attitude with me on my platforms get blocked, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. You're old. Yeah. I've got a decade of experience in this industry and I knew about it way before you were even allowed to mm-hmm. use the computer. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And I can see the progression of what it's been doing over the last 10 years. And I love that we can forecast based on that experience. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, this, you know, I never paid attention to Snapchat because I knew Instagram was going to pick it up at some point because mm-hmm. like they've mm-hmm. done everything else. Now, right. TikTok might be a little harder, harder to overtake, right. but you can mm-hmm. see them trying to do it. And, and yes. mm-hmm. as a result, I know where to tell clients to put their focus because I right. can see the curve and we, the development. We literally live through the trending of the, the situation of social media. We lived right. through everything. Yeah. So we have an advantage. <laughs> it's kind of like those 90s trends coming back where you're like, oh yeah. no, honey, you're doing it wrong. That's not what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I lived through the Gwen Stefani bikini top era, and that is not it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Gwen will never be outdone. But I, I love that we can do that for the clients and also for ourselves. It's just so fun now to be, I think my 30s are way better than my 20s. I'm mm-hmm. enjoying myself so much more. Mm-hmm. But Me kind too. of on that note, <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> I like being old. What I don't like is this prescription skincare that I'm on right now. That's like making my face peel. So if you're seeing me peel, that's what it is. You look beautiful. I don't um, see anything. Yeah, that's because looks, you're looking at it, it looks on so good. This 4K, <laughs> this 4K camera is going to make it look a little bit different. My face is like hot right now. Really? Listen, retinol oh. is a thing. Yeah. And it will tear your skin off, but it'll make it look good. <laughs> Anyway, bringing it back again. This happens a lot, guys. There's a lot of detours. Hopefully they're entertaining for you. But are there, this is a fun question. Are mm-hmm. you seeing anything out here in these internet streets that you are trying to warn clients against, whether it's co- our coaching clients or our um, our agency clients, our course creation students, what, anything that you're seeing that's happening out there with these youngins bringing all these new ideas that you're trying to caution people against? Don't buy followers. <laughs> Just don't do it. It's not cool. Follow for follow, following and unfollowing. It's not cool. It doesn't help you in any way. Don't do it. Don't do yeah. it. It's not meaningful engagement. It's not, it doesn't convert them into clients. There's like, it, it doesn't help you in any way. So don't, yeah. don't do it. <laughs> My thing don't. is just this whole quick fix culture. I can't stand yeah. 
the doing things because it's trendy, the buying followers, the scam techniques, the gurus who don't actually have the experience, inauthenticity, Mm -hmm. like embarrassing yourself on video for views. And then like, what are you going to do with it? Like, yeah, like the person who replicated the poor Gorilla Glue girl, like she made a mistake and then someone started tried it to get the views. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you even converting that into? Like, it's crazy. The whole views for views or likes for likes sake, the van, the focus on vanity metrics and these quick fixes. Mm -hmm. I need people to stop and think like, what are you actually wanting? Because do you Mm -hmm. want to work with brands? Okay. Stop embarrassing yourself and being Mm -hmm. anti-brand on the internet. Like don't do, you know, this isn't back in the, okay, I'm dating myself, but this isn't jackass. You're not Steve-O. Like, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. embarrass yourself yeah. to try to get views because then brands mm-hmm. have to look at that and be like, is this somebody we want to work with and, and attach our name to? Mm-hmm. You know, you got all these likes because you bought followers. Now what? Are mm-hmm. they buying anything from you? What is happening? Like, mm-hmm. take the step beyond the tactic you're using and figure out what is the conversion I'm actually looking for? Right. And right. is this even going to work? Because mm-hmm. I've seen people with mil- like there was an influencer with two point something million followers who couldn't sell 36 t-shirts in a pre-order because her followers wouldn't convert. Meanwhile, you know, you and I combined probably have like 10,000 mm-hmm. followers on Instagram and we have a multi six figure company. Mm-hmm. Like that is a major difference because number vanity numbers don't necessarily mean conversion numbers. And right. to get the lifestyle, I think that you are looking for with this digital freedom and the ability to work anywhere and the ability to, to create content and put it online and make it a lifestyle for yourself, you've got to be conversion mm-hmm. focused. And I think these mm-hmm. quick fixes out in these internet streets, <laughs> not good. Stop, stop renting Lamborghinis stop. and taking pictures in front of them. We know that's not your car. Yeah, we, we know, know that's not your house. We, we know. know that's a fake private jet. We know. Yes. You're not fooling us. We know. Stop. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> now, if you want to show me your real vacation and be like, hey, I worked with a client this morning and got to take my kids to the beach this afternoon. Now that's real. And mm-hmm. if you want to teach people what you did to get there, now we're interested. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And we could again. It interesting. Tell your story through it. Don't just do it because it's trendy and. I mean, because what are you going to do tomorrow when you're done with that? Like, you're just going to find the always next trend. Keep up. Yeah, like, it's so hard to just chase them. And I know for myself, like, back in the YouTube days, there were trending videos. And you would do those videos to get views. But I didn't necessarily do them to get views. I did them because I thought that they were fun to do. And that's mm-hmm. how I made friends online, you right. know? So, And it's it was different then, too, because the trending yeah. videos weren't, like, cinnamon challenge right or what you know Tide pod <laughs> challenge it was like yeah. february favorites and at the first yeah. of the month you were looking for everybody's favorites videos Everybody. because you wanted to you know it was a fun yep. community thing it wasn't necessarily mm-hmm. like a trendy thing like oh we gotta get on it right now mm-hmm. um and there you know i don't want that to say that like seo is not important and doing things that are right. trending on google aren't important when it's relevant to your business mm-hmm. but don't just do it just to do, do it, it you know? views. like yeah. don't do it for the views <laughs> don't do anything for the views or for yeah. because like we mentioned earlier like sometimes that level of attention is very scary when you're unprepared right. like right. when you go to the mall and people are recognizing you or when yeah. I all of a sudden had 20 something million views and I knew somebody passing me in the street in New York City was gonna mm-hmm. recognize my hair like that's terrifying mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. you're not prepared and you get taken and, back because you're not expecting it and then think you know you're with family or you're with your friends that mm-hmm. nobody sees online that could like put them in a weird position as well. So just be mindful. Yeah. I mean, all of these are great topics yeah. that have s- spread off of <laughs> how we got into mm-hmm. this world topic. And I think that is indicative of all the things that we have to offer with our level of experience, because these are all topics that we can do whole episodes on. And we probably will mm-hmm. because of the amount of years and the level of excellence and the level of experience we have in this industry. There are so many things that we could talk about. And that's why I brought you on the show (laughs) because having a conversation about this is I think so much more valuable for people. Um, Mm -hmm. But to wrap it up, because we've already been on for, you know, 40 ish, 50 ish minutes. I can't believe uh, it. It went so fast. (laughs) It went fast. So fast. Wait a you, this, this goes so much faster than reading from an outline. Yeah. And trying to pretend like it's a natural conversation. This is so much fun. Wow. I, pre- I much prefer I this. I love it. When we move, we've definitely got to do this in person. Um, yes. And have Dan come set up 
the fancy mics and we can yes. do it in front of the <laughs> cute furniture that I'm going to buy for the house. Because yes. I definitely also know how to decorate. <laughs> no, I do not. We're going to figure it out as we go. But wrapping it up, what do you think people should take away from listening to this conversation? Like what's sort of your takeaway item? I I think that they should understand that authenticity goes a long way. And we're not just talking or we're not just saying that we know these things. We actually live through them. We work through them with no instruction manual. Like there was no tutorial on how to do these things. So, I mean, when you're listening to, you know, this podcast, like take away and understand that we know what we're talking about because we have been through it. And, you know, I hope that everybody learns a lot more as they watch and listen in. (laughs) I think so too. I I think that Mm -hmm. when we were talking about how we would form the dynamic of this podcast with two hosts, with, you know, Mm -hmm. in a co-host situation, one of the things that made it work was the big sister energy. (laughs) Kalei and I are both the oldest children. I'm the oldest of three and Kalei is the oldest of a lot. (laughs) <laughs> yes, a lot. <laughs> She's the oldest of quite a few <laughs> over a large spread of time. So Fun. <laughs> what I want people to take away is not only like, you know, the the note lessons, the, the lessons you would take from this episode and write notes about, but also that we are here as not a parental, not a mm-hmm. um sort of like instructional or authority mm-hmm. figure, but more of like again, that in that big sister energy, like we've lived through right. it. We've got the advice for you. We can teach you and guide you on how to do some things, but always with that loving big sister push. If you've got a bad relationship with your big sister, like please ignore that and like let us step in <laughs> and be yes. your big sisters <laughs> in yes. the marketing and online personal branding world because that's the energy that we're trying to come at this with. Like, listen, we've got the experience. We're ready to help you in any way that we can have these conversations with you. You know, we can't obviously see all of you down on a zoom call and, and talk to all of you, but that's what this is meant to be. And mm-hmm. going forward, we'll have, you know, more specific topics that we're talking about, but there's always going to be these gems of things that you could write on a post-it note and stick on your mirror and use as an affirmation or things that you can write down in your notebook and implement the very next mm-hmm. time you go to create a piece of content. And that's the goal. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed meeting my beautiful, amazing friend, Kalei, slash co-host, slash person who keeps me sane and alive every day. <laughs> Couldn't run my business without her or any of her many, many siblings. <laughs> or your parents, too. I haven't met them yet, but, you know, one day. Soon. Soon. <laughs> Whatever the Lagunera family cookout is, I hope to get an invite you invited invited. (laughs) there's a lot of different kinds of food at that cookout I'm real excited so (laughs) thank you guys so much for listening if you're watching on YouTube thanks so much for watching this video if you're on YouTube go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we're going to be releasing every week if you are on Spotify Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts whatever your favorite app is go ahead and subscribe to the podcast there leave a review if you can because it does help us out and uh, we will see you in the next episode Bye. Bye. <laughs>